The last glacial maximum for Europe began receding during the upper Pleistocene around 14,000 to 13,000 years ago. During this period of warming and rising sea levels, parts of present-day Denmark formed islands with an extended archipelago. The map would have looked quite different due to lower sea levels, featuring Doggerland, a landmass that once connected present-day Denmark and the UK. Denmark and Lower Scandinavia were teeming with big game, such as woolly mammoths, wild aurochs, and giant elk. However, it was also a perilous land, home to formidable predators like bears and ferocious large cat species. Hunter-gatherers had roamed the lands after the LGM in what is now present-day Denmark and Sweden. The Mesolithic Age lasted from 9000 BCE to 6000 BCE. European populations of the Mesolithic were mainly hunter-gatherers who had developed advanced stoneworking techniques. These hunter-gatherer populations in what is now Denmark and Lower Sweden constituted a homogeneous genetic cluster. Encyclopedia of the Humanities. The Middle Ages is a period in European and Asian prehistory spanning approximately between 6000 and 1000 BC, during which the first metalworking techniques were developed. Continuing, it is divided into three stages, the Copper Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. The Neolithic 7000 BCE to 5000 BCE is characterized by the invention of agriculture and animal husbandry and the emergence of sedentism in small villages as a way of life. Paleoanthropologists initially believed that Cro-Magnon did not survive the Ice Age and that there was no genetic continuity from earlier European populations. These scientists prefer to promote out of Africa theory and the idea of full replacement. In previous videos on this channel we have covered early European modern humans such as Slate Kuhn, Baku Kiro, and Pestera Ku Owase to the Gravatians and Solutrians. We have demonstrated that there is strong evidence for continuity from early European modern humans to Gravatians, Solutrians, and Magdalenian populations 22,000 years ago to 11,000 years ago. We have shown how new evidence from three top geneticists early in 2024 established a direct link from early European modern humans to post-LGM Gravatians. And now, a new paper suggests that not only did early European modern humans' genetic lines survive the LGM to contribute to later European populations, but a population of Cro-Magnon might have persisted as well. The Ertebol A paper was published at Nature in early 2024 by a mainly Swedish team of archaeologists and geneticists. Note aside, it is more precise to refer to the Danish Mesolithic, which includes the Ertebol, Maglemos, and Kagamos cultures. The commonly used abbreviation which we will use henceforth is EBK. 
paper, we analyzed shotgun sequence genomes from 100 skeletons spanning 7,300 years of the Mesolithic period, Neolithic period, and early Bronze Age in Denmark. The authors go on to suggest that these three populations had a unique culture and were genetically distinct from all Western and Central European hunter-gatherers of the period. Continuing, we observe that Danish Mesolithic individuals of the Maglamos, Kangemos, and Ertebol cultures form a distinct genetic cluster related to other Western European hunter-gatherers. They remained isolated without any detectable influx of migrants over a 4,500 year period. From their skeletal remains and genetic markers, the scientists determined their physical features as brown, hazel, or green eyes, slightly lower stature in height, and a high probability of brown or black hair. Anatolian Farmers During this period, Neolithic farmers from Anatolia had expanded into Central and Western Europe. However, this Anatolian expansion was halted before reaching present-day Denmark paper. It remains a mystery why the Neolithic farming expansion came to a 1,000 year standstill before entering southern Scandinavia. Continuing, the Neolithic transition was delayed here by a millennium compared to Central Europe, during which hunter-gatherer societies continued to flourish until around 5,900 BP. Continuing, during that time period, the Danish Mesolithic population was only marginally affected by farmer populations to the south. This despite the fact that archaeological evidence indicates that the Anatolian farmers were fierce warriors. Central and South European hunter-gatherer populations suffered horrible atrocities at the hands of the invaded Anatolians. Science Direct 2015, the first farmers who spread west from Anatolia to arrive in Central Europe 7,500 years ago engaged in warfare and systematic violence. One grave contained more than 100 bodies that bore the marks of violent attacks. Ertebali Warriors Stephen Plenty is a history professor at Universitat Leipzig. He specializes in ancient weaponry. His paper on Ertebol culture was recently published at University Leipzig Academia.edu. Paper There is some evidence of Ertebol conflict, an arrowhead in a pelvis at Skateholm, Sweden a bone point in a throat at Vodbuk, Zealand, a bone point in the chest at Storybiers, Sweden. Continuing, more significant is evidence of cannibalism at Dreiholmen and Molgabet. Human bones were broken open to obtain the marrow. Not as food, the warlike Ertebol population may have ritually devoured its enemies in order to ingest their powers. This finding of an extremely violent culture among the Ertebol is consistent with the findings of the authors of the Mesolithic paper. Continuing, further the Danish Ertebol population may have been acquainted with armed conflict, enabling territorial defense against intruders. The Mesolithic study authors also suggest that Denmark's topography transformed into an archipelago by rising sea levels 
effectively shielded it from outsider attacks. Paper. It may be that it was complicated by a high Mesolithic hunter-gatherer population density owing to a very productive marine and coastal environment. Continuing, most of the larger settlements cluster at good fishing locations along the coasts, but there are also specialized hunting camps in the interior. Last surviving Cro-Magnon, Professor Plenty reaches a stunning conclusion. The Artibol and preceding Cogamos populations were of mixed race. Many skulls show evidence of facial features or dimensions of Cro-Magnon man. Continuing, the Cro-Magnon skull is dolichocephalic the jaw prognathus, the nose flat, and the supraorbital ridges pronounced. Continuing, the latter type prevailed in late Paleolithic times in Europe, supplanting Neanderthal man there. Note this would be pre-LGM 30,000 years ago to 65,000 years ago. As we have extensively covered on this channel, the Neanderthal admixture in early European modern humans is significant. Ertaboli individuals before any admixture with Anatolians could have been a mixed race of Cro-Magnon and Neanderthal. The Baco Kiro individual dated 46,000 years ago had an estimated 3.8 to 4.4% Neanderthal. In the early 2000s, Professor Eric Trinkos of Washington University studied extensively the Pesaroku Oase mandible from 43,000 years ago. Oase had an estimated 6.4 to 7.1% Neanderthal. The Ertaboli Legacy. The Swedish geneticists conclude in their paper, Neolithic farmers with Anatolian-derived ancestry began to arrive 5.9 thousand years ago in southern Scandinavia. They also observed that the fate of the Mesolithic Ertaboli population remains shrouded in uncertainty. We do not know how the Mesolithic Ertaboli population disappeared. Plenty concludes in his paper that Ertaboli population are therefore possibly an intermediate phase in the evolution of the Nordics with an admixture of agrarian southerners with indigenous Cro-Magnon. The putative ending date for Cro-Magnon is 10,000 years ago. If Professor Plenty is correct, and the early pre-Anatolian admixture Ertaboli are Cro-Magnon. They would be the last survivors of their Homo sapiens subspecies. More to come on the Upper Mesolithic. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe, and please pass this video on to others. We'll see you soon.